，我想跟你学学要多少钱。你叫什么名字？我叫李小龙。哦、oh.。My last name is Lee, Bruce Lee. I was born in San Francisco, 1940. I'm 24 right now. Bruce Lee is a name that almost everyone knows. Changing the game in martial arts movies, right? Now get this: some of Bruce Lee's real-life fights were so out there, so mind-blowing that if there wasn't actual footage of them, you'd probably think they were just made-up tales. Let's dive into some of Bruce Lee's epic showdowns that were so wild. Lee against Yoichi Nakachi. Back in 1994, there was this cool moment when Black Belt magazine shared a story from Jesse Glover, known as the first ever student of Bruce Lee. Glover shared an incredible tale from the time before Lee became the martial arts legend we all admire. It's about a face-off with a karate champ named Yoichi Nakachi. This all started when Lee was doing a demo at Seattle's Edison Technical School. And made some comments about karate being too stiff, compared to the smooth moves of kung fu. Nakachi took offense and was dead set on showing Li was wrong. Li usually didn't bother with every person looking to challenge him, but Nakachi kept pushing. After thinking over his student's advice, Li told Glover he was ready to take Nakachi on. They picked the YMCA in downtown for their secret showdown. With just a handful of people in the know watching it, they decided the bout would have three rounds, two minutes each, with a knockout being the way to win. As soon as the match kicked off, Nakachi tried to land a punch, but Lee was too quick, dodging and then hitting back fast with a series of strikes and a kick that knocked Nakachi out in just 11 seconds. Nakachi was down, and it looked really bad at first. This wasn't just any fight; it was proof of Bruce Lee's amazing skill, showing his fight philosophy in real action. One inch punch. Let's talk about two of the biggest names in the world of combat: Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali. These guys were in different leagues, with Lee being a martial arts wizard and Ali the champ of heavyweight boxing. But get this, Lee. Though he weighed just 130 pounds, could hit with the power of Ali, who was almost double his weight, at 260 pounds. Lee had this incredible strength, throwing punches at 118 miles per hour, which is on par with the kind of power Ali had in his fists. Bruce Lee looked up to Ali, spending hours watching his fights, totally captivated by Ali's skill, especially his quick. Dance-like moves that left his opponents in the dust. Lee was all about mixing different fighting styles, and he even told his students to watch Ali to learn how to move fast and hit hard. Now, imagine a world where Lee and Ali could have faced off. That's a scene Lee himself thought about. Even on the movie set of Enter the Dragon, he talked to the director Robert Klaus. About how tiny his hand looked next to Ali's, joking about the odds if they ever really fought. Who would win between them if, by some twist of fate, they could have matched up? Lee with his lightning-fast attacks and Ali with his knockout power—it's a topic that fans can debate forever. Combining the art of martial arts with the raw strength of boxing in a legendary face-off that's epic to even think about. But here's the kicker. Lee, with all his martial arts genius, was still open to learning from someone like Ali. It's kind of surprising to realize that Lee was drawing inspiration from Ali, but then again, Ali wasn't called the greatest for nothing. The brief portrayal of Bruce Lee. So, it's been a couple of years since Quentin Tarantino's movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, hit the screens, and people still chat about how it showed Bruce Lee. Some think it captured him well; others, not so much. The big question for martial arts fans is if the movie really showed off Lee's legendary skills. Now, comparing those movie scenes with Lee's actual fights is tricky because real footage of him fighting for real is super rare. We all know his fights in movies like Enter the Dragon 
and Game of Death are epic, but remember, those were all carefully planned out for the camera. In Tarantino's flick, there's this character, Cliff Booth played by Brad Pitt, who's a tough stunt guy. He kind of mocks movie martial artists like Lee, calling them dancers. It sets up a funny scene, but it's more about showing off the characters than really digging into a martial artist's skill set. When we talk about the real Bruce Lee and his fighting, there's some rare footage from the 1967 Long Beach International Karate Championships. Back then, Lee was already turning heads with his incredible moves, like those famous two-finger push-ups and super-fast punches, even before he became famous as Kato in The Green Hornet. At this 1967 event, Lee wasn't just putting on a show. He was in his element, showing off Jeet Kune Do, the unique martial arts style he created. He's there fighting Ted Wong, one of his top students, all geared up for safety, California style. Watching Lee in action, in his white gear, he was all about speed and getting it right. These old clips show his fighting style as a kind of early version of what we now call mixed martial arts, hinting that Bruce Lee was way ahead of his time, kind of laying down the groundwork for a sport that would blow up years later. Bruce Lee's powerful kick. Bruce Lee was this martial arts superhero, right? Known for his super fast moves and that unique way of fighting, he was all about using his whole body to land those mind-blowing strikes, legs included. So there's this story about him that's pretty legendary, Bruce Lee and his encounter with a massive 45 kilogram sandbag. He hit it with what's called a super side kick. And guess what? He split it right open, not in a movie, but for real. This moment was so epic that it even got recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. Think about the power you need to tear through a sandbag like that. Despite his fame, some folks still thought Lee was just a movie guy, showing off for the cameras without any real chops. Well, they sure got that wrong. Lee's life was full of moments proving he was just as tough in real life as he was on the big screen. Now, if we look at someone like Iron Mike Tyson, known for his knockout punches, it said his hits felt like getting smacked with a 50 kg cement bag. When you see Tyson working over a heavy bag, you can tell he's putting everything into it. But then you think about Bruce Lee, who could make that same kind of bag fly with just one kick, almost knocking it over. Seeing how each of them dealt with the bag really shows the kind of extraordinary talent Lee had. So Bruce Lee wasn't just some martial arts movie star, he was like a force of nature, mixing discipline, skill, and unbelievable power. His awesome feats have kept inspiring people long after, showing just how much one person can shake up the world of martial arts and blend that movie magic with real life heroics. The impact he made before even hitting 33 is astonishing. Imagine the heights he could have reached with more time. Personally, training under him, picking up even a fraction of his skills would have been incredible. Don't you think? Six kicks in just one blink of an eye. Bruce Lee, a name that's like a lightning bolt in the world of martial arts. This guy was on another level seriously. He could whip out six kicks in just one blink of an eye. Imagine that. It's not some fancy movie trick. It's what he was actually capable of, thanks to insane training and discipline. Bruce Lee was more than just a martial arts guy. He was like a force out of nature, breaking what we think are the rules of what people can do. He had this hardcore training where he'd add heavy weights to his arms and legs, pushing his limits to the max. When he took those weights off, he was unstoppable, moving faster than you could follow. But don't get it twisted, Bruce Lee was as real as you and me. He wasn't born with some kind of magical powers. Nope. He earned every bit of his skills through hard work, a steel strong will, and total dedication to his craft. Every bit of Lee's life was soaked in martial arts. 
His wife, Linda Lee Cadwell, said he was always sharpening his skills, never wasting a moment. Even when he seemed to relax, he was training, like doing wrist exercises while watching TV. Bruce Lee shook up the martial arts world big time. He wasn't about sticking to the old ways. He was all about making things better, even if it ruffled some feathers. He paved new paths and left a mark so big that he's still the king of martial arts mastery. Now, to give you an idea of how unbeatable Lee's skills were, there's this martial artist, Silvana Shamoon, and her student who hit a record with 178 kicks in a minute. That sounds wild, right? But break it down. And it's like 2.9 kicks per second, which is cool, but still not even close to Bruce Lee's speed. So yeah, Bruce Lee was more than just a martial arts superstar. He was a phenomenon, showing us all what people can do with the right mix of discipline and passion. His place in martial arts history, absolutely legendary. Bruce Lee's weird diet plan. Bruce Lee, that martial arts icon, wasn't just about the fighting. He was a total fitness genius, way ahead of his time. He came up with training ways that are pretty standard now, but were totally new back then. Delving into Matthew Polly's Bruce Lee A Life, we get to see how Lee was a trailblazer, mixing intense exercise with a smart eating plan, setting the stage for how athletes train today. Back in the day, most athletes stuck to what they knew, just their sport. But Lee? He mixed it up, blending strength and stamina workouts with his martial arts drills. He didn't just focus on martial arts moves, he aimed to boost his whole body's power. Lee would be out there every morning, skipping rope or running for miles, stuff that's common now, but was pretty groundbreaking at the time. Lee's place was like a mini gym, equipped with all the workout gear you could think of. He was super serious about staying fit, paying just as much attention to what he ate. He was all about the protein shakes before they hit the mainstream, whipping up his own mix with protein powder, raw eggs, yes, even the shells, bananas, peanut flour, powdered milk, and even chocolate ice cream for a bit of fun. He even tried something as wild as raw hamburger meat drinks just to get enough protein. But with Bruce Lee, it wasn't just about getting buff. He wanted to stay quick and flexible, the qualities that made him stand out in movies and martial arts. At one point, he bulked up too much and realized it messed with his movement which was everything to him. So he tweaked his workouts to find that sweet spot, staying strong but also nimble, like his famous saying to be like water. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Fight against Vic Moore. So let's talk about Bruce Lee, a name that's legendary in the world of martial arts. This guy, right from his youth in Hong Kong, was like a storm of kicks and punches and he had a bit of a knack for getting into trouble. He wasn't just any kid. He ended up in some hot water with the triads, the big-time gangsters there, especially after a fight with one of their leader's sons. This was way more intense than any normal street fight. It was like something out of a gangster movie. Lee didn't just get into fights for the heck of it. He was serious about martial arts, turning his passion into something that shaped him into the icon we know. When he moved to the US, particularly when he was at the University of Washington, he wasn't just hitting the books. He was building his future, teaching martial arts right from his home, and starting what would become a legendary dojo. But Lee's rise to fame in the movies got some side-eye from martial arts circles. This is where Vic Moore comes in, a big name in karate. These two had a face-off that's become pretty famous or infamous, depending on how you look at it. It was Lee's super-fast moves against Moore's solid defense. There's some silent film footage showing Lee in action, super-fast, but Moore always said he could block Lee's hits, sparking a debate that's lasted for years. Moore himself wasn't just some random opponent. He was a martial arts champ with his own legacy of wins and respect. The face-off between Lee and Moore isn't just about who hit whom. It's about two giants in martial arts crossing paths, each with their own incredible journey, 
making this showdown a memorable piece of martial arts history. Master of Nunchaku Let's talk about Nunchaku, those fascinating weapons that became super famous thanks to Bruce Lee. Now, these aren't just simple sticks connected by a chain or rope. In the hands of Bruce Lee, they turned into something amazing, like a natural part of him, full of energy. They actually came from Japan, made from two solid sticks linked together. But at first, Bruce Lee wasn't even into them. Compared to the classic Chinese martial arts weapons, nunchaku seemed a bit odd. Here's something that sounds like it's straight out of a movie. Bruce Lee didn't like nunchucks at all in the beginning. He even called them a worthless piece of junk. It's funny because these tools have a rich history, going back 400 years in Japanese martial arts, mainly used to improve quick hand moves and stance rather than for fighting. The story gets more interesting with Dan Inosanto, Lee's buddy, and a martial arts whiz himself, who convinced Bruce to try out these so-called junky sticks. Just three months later, after training with Inosanto, Bruce was using nunchaku like a pro, creating an incredible force with them, and they quickly became his thing in movies. Now, nunchaku are a big part of what people remember about Bruce Lee, and he's the reason they're so popular in martial arts today. When one of the extras on set dared him, after filming one day, most of the team, like director Robert Klaus and assistant director Chaplin Chang, had already packed up and gone. Yet on the set, things were still buzzing. An extra called Kelefe, which sort of means a minor, unnoticed person, walked up to Bruce Lee, wanting some tips on perfecting a kick. This small request turned into something nobody expected. Bruce, always the mentor, agreed to help out, showing off the patience and skill he was known for. But things took a twist when the extra, now feeling bold, dared to challenge Bruce to put his lessons into action right there in a real spa. Bruce tried to keep things cool, saying he needed to leave. But the extra kept pushing, wanting to prove his mettle. Soon enough, it was on. Bruce had to step up to maintain his respect, and the extras too, I guess. The clash was quick and to the point. Bruce ended it with a kick that unfortunately broke the extra's ribs. True to his nature, Bruce felt bad about the accident. He went out of his way to cover the guy's medical costs and sort things out for his mom too. This incident, captured by a crew member named Henry Wong, stirred quite a bit of talk. Bruce was worried that if the footage got out, it might twist the real story, so he had a chat with Henry about getting rid of it. However, for professional reasons, the clip stayed in the can. In a fight against Chuck Norris, in the world of movies, there was this epic moment that everyone talked about. Bruce Lee going head-to-head -head with Chuck Norris in The Way of the Dragon. This film, directed by Lee himself, gave us a fight scene that's now legendary, set in none other than Rome's ancient Colosseum. Here you have Norris, with his record of never being beaten, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lee, making it feel like a real-life battle of legends rather than a movie scene. Lee chose Rome over the US for this scene, aiming for something massive, and what a choice it was. While the movie showed Lee winning in the real world, Norris and Lee never actually threw down. But here's an interesting bit. Norris, who's a big deal in martial arts with a top-level black belt in Taekwondo, once said that Lee would have won if they had ever really fought. Norris admitting, Bruce, of course, no one can beat him, shows the huge respect he had for Lee's talent. Norris isn't just some movie star doing action scenes, he's a legit martial artist. So when he says Lee was the best, it really means something. This respect goes beyond just fighting skills. It's about recognizing Lee as a legend, a man known for his incredible speed, precision, and unbeatable spirit. We've just explored some of Bruce Lee's most unbelievable fights, 
the kind that if they weren't recorded, you'd swear they were made up. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on these legendary battles. Dive into the comments and let's ignite a discussion about these iconic moments that showcase Bruce Lee's unparalleled martial arts skills.